What's up, y'all? Jared Sandler here with you. Uh, some Rangers things as we uh, talk some ball on this off day. The Rangers getting ready to play two games in Philadelphia, Tuesday, Wednesday, off Thursday, three games in New York, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. The big news yesterday after the win over the Braves was that Willie Calhoun has been optioned to AAA, and according to the, the beat writers, Willie expressed his desire to be traded at that point. The Rangers acquired Willie in 2017, along with Brendan Davis and A.J. Alexi in the U Darvish deal. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, it's possible that Willie's time as a Ranger, the big league level is, is come to an end, um, you know, based on his desires, whether the Rangers feel similarly, whether, you know, a, a move of that nature, uh, you know, a trade uh, at this time is, is what makes the most sense. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll wait and see what went wrong or, or what can, you know, what can we kind of take away from this? So first of all, you know, at the beginning of the year, Willie was hitting the ball hard without the results he's not really hitting the ball nearly as hard and he's hitting the ball on the ground a lot. So even when he is hitting the ball hard, a lot of it is, is ground ball stuff right into the shift. So, you know, we, we've talked about this before. There really isn't one stat that is just a total catch all. There are certain stats that do a much better job of it than others, but exit velocity, while a very important stat is really most appropriately consumed considering context and the context that, is important to consider specific to Willie Calhoun and exit velocity is the, the type of batted ball, ground ball, pop-up, line drive, fly ball. You know, I can hit a ball 105 miles an hour on the ground, 105 miles an hour on a line, 105 miles an hour is a fly ball. And my results are going to be different. And the consistency there is that the 105 mile an hour ground ball, while probably will yield better results than a 100 mile an hour ground ball or a 95 mile an hour ground ball, is not going to near uh, yield near the results that a same uh, exit velocity line driver fly ball will yield. Certainly, mm-hmm. you're not going to slug nearly as much, uh, and your batting average on those types of batted balls won't be as high. So, you know, people talk about exit velocity, and I'm certainly one of those people who I like to use that. But you also have to consider, you know, hitting a ball 108 miles an hour on the ground right into a three man shift probably isn't going to yield great results. Uh, but here's the other thing, too, just looking at Willie's numbers so far this year, his exit velocity is right around career average, just barely, barely a tick above career average. So uh, he's he's kind of middle of the pack, maybe low, you know, high, kind of like the, I don't know, low to, to, to middle of the pack of Major League Baseball in terms of hard hit rate, his hard hit rate of 38% uh, so far this year, uh, or his, his hard hit rate is in the 38th percentile, I should say. Uh, and his barrel rate is in the 13th percentile. Now, what he's done a great job of this year, he doesn't swing and miss. His whiff rate's in the 99th percentile. You know, so he's, you know, he's not chasing either at 97th percentile. His walk rate is in the 91st percentile. The, the plate discipline, that stuff has all been good. Unfortunately, uh, you know, as much has been made about how he's hitting the ball hard, really now considering the sample as it's gotten bigger, he hasn't been, which brings me to one last thing. Sample size. This is not a large sample size. Not a lot typically can be drawn from this sample size. The Rangers over the last several years have been very loyal to the idea that you need a a bigger sample size to make determinations, which leads me to believe that there's something more here, right? Maybe it's that, you know, they're not seeing eye to eye on, on what Willie needs to do to have success in their eyes. You know, maybe he's not grasping, uh, whatever adjustments they are preaching or, or is unwilling to, uh, you know, whatever the case might be, uh, it seems like there's a possibility that uh, they're just not on the same page, which maybe further accelerated this decision. And we've talked about this as well. The last thing is if Willie's not hitting, then Willie's not really a plus contributor to the team. And, I, and that's not a shot. That's just the reality. He's not a, a you know, a, a base runner who's going to add to the team. He's not, uh, a defensive player who's going to add, he's got to hit and he can't just hit at league average level. Cause if he's hitting at league average level and doing the other things below league average level, now you got a below average player. You need him to hit well above league average and he's not doing that. So, you know, hopefully this is not the end of the Willie Calhoun era, although it does seem like signs are, are more aggressively pointing towards that being the case than in years past. And oh, well, maybe for Willie, he does need to change the scenery as he talked about. And maybe the Rangers are ready to move on uh, on their end. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. But uh, you know, that's the big thing when, when you know, people are saying, well, he's hitting the ball hard. Uh, first of all, the, the numbers say right now he's kind of not, uh, and he's hitting the ball on the ground, and the Rangers want him to elevate. And, and being able to elevate the ball is a skill. A lot of it has to do with pitch recognition and 
uh, you know, your, your specific approach. And uh, it's not like anyone wants him to just hit infield pop-ups, but beating the ball on the ground, which is unfortunately what he's been doing a lot of here lately uh, is not, you know, is not going to be the recipe uh, here for success. And, um, you know, I, I think uh, that's maybe one of the, the elements of frustration for the Rangers. All right. Uh, Adolis Garcia, someone who's doing well. I'll admit, you know, there was a lot of uh, curiosity, maybe concern that Adolis' second half last year was going to, uh, you know, really kind of reflect how this season uh, was going to go for him. You know, if you look at what Adolis did in 2021, obviously his first half was great. What about his second half post all-star break? He hit 211 with a 626 OPS and it kind of had the makings of player who burst onto the scene, took full advantage of the league, not being as familiar with him. The league got a little familiar with him, started adjusting to some of his weaknesses and he couldn't adjust back. Well, uh, you know, I don't want to overstate it because Adolis Garcia, you know, is hitting 220, uh, but it does seem like he's been a more willing walker. You know, he had seven walks in April uh, and he's hitting with some slug. But the thing that I like the most is, you know, when you can look at, all right, what was a big area of struggle for Adolis last year? Uh, elevated fastball. He really struggled with that particular pitch, you know, not just laying off the pitch that wasn't a strike, but having success with the pitch that was a strike. Uh, totally different this year, you know, so far this year, and obviously uh, small sample size still, but one of the things that stood out about Adolis here this year is the success he's had uh, with the elevated fastball. Last year, he hit 190 on the elevated fastball with a 333 slug. He had three extra base hits all of last year, including one home run on that particular pitch. Well, we're not even a full month into the season because of the delayed start. Adolis is hitting 308 against that pitch with a 769 slug, and he already has as many home runs and as many extra base hits against that particular pitch this year as he did all of last year. So it does seem like he's made some adjustments and is much better uh, equipped to hit the elevated fastball, which as you know, is very important because that is such an in vogue pitch because of the difficulty uh, that it uh, presents hitters. So that's good to see. I'm definitely excited about where Adolis is, uh, what we've seen from him so far. And, and hopefully after a little bit of a slow start, uh, you know, we get, we get an uptick. All right. Uh, the bullpen bullpen, a big source of frustration early on this season, understandably. So they struggled first nine games and ERA around five and three quarters, a little bit under 575. Uh, they were giving up hits at a very high rate. Uh, the OPS against the bullpen was around 830. Uh, they were giving up nearly two home runs per nine innings. That's way too high. Uh, the last 13 games, though, that ERA has been cut down by more than three runs. They went from five, right around 570. They're right around 230 now. Uh, the 253 batting average against is now 168. The 823 OPS against is now 612. The home run rate has been slashed in half and they're striking out one more batter per nine innings than they did prior. So, you know, this bullpen has actually been a, a source of success here of late. Now, which, which is the true identity of the bullpen? The first nine games of the last 13 reality is it's probably somewhere in between, but it does set an example that, you know, these things, bullpens are very volatile, especially when you don't have a bunch of guys with skins on the wall. Uh, you know, it's not like the Rangers have in their bullpen, Hendricks and Bummer uh, and, you know, uh, uh, what's his face? The, you know, I know Michael Kyle can't think all of a sudden the, the hard throwing lefty from uh, the Chicago White Sox is going to come to me in a second. Uh, the kid that it was first round pick for them who, uh, oh, they, I'm going to, it's going to bug me. I can't think of it. I can't think of it. I can't think of it. Uh, oh, Oh, what's his name? Oh, I'm losing. I'm, I'm losing it on air. Maybe he's hurt. I don't know. Uh, I don't know why I can't think of it. Either way, uh, I'm sure it'll come to me in a second. But they, you know, also have Kendall Graveman, uh, and so you know, it's not like you've got guys that have shown year after year a lot of success in the uh, in the bullpen. And that's that's kind of the the product. That's that's kind of how this thing goes uh, when you're not as you don't have that sort of um, you know you don't have that sort of a track record and there's a lot of unknown a lot of uncertainty and so not a surprise that the uh not a surprise that uh the white Sox, you know are going to have a lot more or a lot less volatility uh than say the texas rangers that's just kind of normal 
Uh, and, you know, right now, thankfully, what we're seeing is uh, the Rangers are uh, starting to normalize a little bit. Garrett Crochet, uh, name came up. Garrett Crochet is who I was referring to. But anyway, good to see from the bullpen. Last thing, Rangers have a lot of young players in their system. We're eager for a lot of these guys to come up. We've talked a lot about why waiting on Cole Wynn and Jack Leiter and these guys, why being patient makes sense. Well, let's also now take some time to focus on the position players. All right. You got the Josh Smith, the Davis Wenzels, the Leody Tavares's. And, you know, I, I think Josh Young was uh, going to likely be the opening day third baseman if he was healthy, but, you know, he, he unfortunately wasn't. So we'll throw him into this category. These guys are all really good prospects and prospect rankings are what they are. Take them for what they're worth, you know, which is, uh, something fun to consume. And I don't want to discard them. I mean, I think prospect rankings do a really good job of evaluating these guys, but they're not, you know, they're not uh, infallible. And, uh, you know, it's it's not like the the quality of, you know, the, the 10 best major leaguers right now were not all necessarily top prospects. Some were, uh, some weren't. Uh, and And, you know, whether it's the 10 best or just really good winning players, they weren't all littering the the top of these prospect lists but a lot of the best players were and uh, a lot of the best players didn't necessarily have immediate success and so I want to highlight four guys who were all considered at one point the top prospect or a top three prospect in baseball Jared Kelnick Julio Rodriguez Bobby Witt Jr. C.J. Abrams this is not Kelnick's first stance uh, in the majors he struggled last year got sent down came back up was a little bit better but even a guy like Kelnick a young kid who's in his second partial season in the big leagues I want to read their batting averages and it doesn't really matter you know who's who 141 234 216 182 none of these guys have an on-base percentage better than 306 and the others are all in the the 200s uh, no one is slugging better than 325 that is an abysmal slugging percentage all right. You know, the league average slugging percentage, uh, you know, even in a down year so far in terms of offense, the league average slugging percentage is 370. None of these guys are slugging better than 325. So point is, these guys are all elite prospects and chances are not all of them, but two, maybe three of them are going to end up being all star caliber players and maybe all four is playing the odds. You know, a lot of times, you know, maybe one of these guys is not going to pan out at that level. Either way, they're all getting off to slow starts. That's not to say that if they would have stayed another year in the minors, they wouldn't have, a, you know, a learning curve at the big league level. It's not to say they should have stayed in the minors. Uh, I think the, the consensus is that these guys were all ready. You know, Abrams, Rodriguez, Witt, Kelnick, they were all ready to be big leaguers this year, yet here they are struggling early on. So there's no reason if these guys are struggling, that's not to say everyone else who's not as uh, highly regarded as them will struggle as well. But it is to say that if these guys are struggling and think of, you know, the possibilities and, and the, the, the difficulties uh, that you have to consider with other guys who maybe aren't as talented. So, you know, I just wanted to point that out, especially because a lot of the conversations we're going to have as Ranger fans are going to be about the matriculation through the system. A lot of these young guys. All right. Good talk. Talk to y'all later.